Let's talk about six laws of exponents. First, the law for multiplying the same base when there are exponents involved. The rule is b to the m power times b to the n power equals b to the power of m plus n. When you're multiplying two factors that have the same base, the exponents can be added. For example, x to the second power times x to the third power, well, the base is the same, both are x. The exponents are added, and we get x to the power of 5. The reason for this is because x squared is x times x, and x to the third power is x times x times x, three factors of x. So x squared times x to the third is x to the power of well, there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 factors of x. When you multiply the same base, the exponents are added. On the other hand, when you're raising a power to a power, for example, b to the power of m raised to the nth power, the exponents are multiplied. For example, x squared to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 2 times 3, which is 6. When you're raising a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. x squared to the third power is x to the sixth. The third law of exponents is what to do when you have more than one factor <clears throat> inside of a quantity that's being raised to a power. Here we have ab to the m power. That's equal to a to the m times b to the m. For example, xy squared raised to the power of 3. Well, each factor inside the parentheses gets raised to the third power. So x gets raised to the third power, and it becomes x to the third. Additionally, y squared gets raised to the third power. Whenever you raise y squared to the third power, this harkens back to law two. You're raising a power to a power, so the exponents must be multiplied. That's y to the sixth power, y to the sixth power. The fourth law of exponents is very similar to the third. When you raise a fraction to a power, both the numerator and denominator are raised to that same power. For example, x over y to the third raised to the fourth power. The numerator and the denominator each are going to be raised to the fourth power. So x will be raised to the fourth power, and y to the third will be raised to the fourth power. There's already a power on the y, so when you raise that to the fourth power, those exponents are multiplied, and 3 times 4 is why we have y to the twelfth in the denominator. Law 5 is b to the m over b to the n. This is similar to rule 1. In rule 1, we talked about the result of multiplying the same base, Rule 5 discusses dividing the same base. When you have b to the m over b to the n, that is equal to b to the power of m minus n. The exponents here are being subtracted. For example, x to the fifth over x to the third is x to the power of 5 minus 3, or x to the second. What's happening here is we have x to the fifth power, five factors of x in a numerator, and in the denominator, there's three factors of x, x times x times x. And what's happening is that three of the factors in the denominator can be divided away with three factors in the numerator, each being one. And all that you're left with is two factors of x in the numerator, x squared. A simpler way to accomplish what I did right here is to simply subtract the exponents. The sixth law of exponents b to the power of negative m. When you raise something to a negative power, when you raise a base to a negative power, it goes to the bottom of a fraction. So b to the negative n power is equal to 1 over b to the positive m. Let's look at two examples. Let's look at two examples. The first example is x to the negative 3 times y over z. The x has a negative exponent. The x is being raised to the negative third power. So that means it's going to go to the bottom of the fraction bar. When it gets there, we're going to write it as x to the positive 3 power. x to the negative third times y all over z equals y over x to the third z. The x moved to the bottom because it had a negative exponent. 
the factor of y and the factor of z are unchanged because they do not have a negative exponent. On the other hand, if we look at the final example, if we have y over x to the negative 3z, if something in a denominator has a negative exponent, it moves to the numerator. Once it moves to the numerator, the exponent becomes positive. The y and the z, again, did not have a negative exponent, so they stayed where they were at. y over x to the negative third z equals x to the third in the numerator times y all over z.